Welcome into this Wednesday edition of Jags AM after a disastrous performance on Monday Night Football. I'm Kainani Stevens. Brian Sexton and John Ogier are with me today. We're going to talk this thing out, but we are not going to sugarcoat things. It did not look good in primetime. It was embarrassing for the Jags as they lost to Buffalo. Big thing number one, blowout in Buffalo. I haven't been here that long. That was the worst performance I've seen from the team. Brian, you've been here a long time. Yep. That was not good. That was the worst regular season loss in franchise history. And I can go through it, and we don't have graphics to support it, but trust me, that was the worst. And it is emphasized, highlighted, by the fact that there was so much on the line. And that the quarterback you know, spoke his mind after the loss last Sunday to the Browns. We all expected this team to be a competitive contender this year. I, not maybe for a Super Bowl, but in the mix for the division title in the playoffs. And despite two losses, they kind of looked like maybe they could get there. Last night, John, it didn't look like they even belonged in the conversation. Yeah, unfortunately, I can think of some that I can compare it to. Tampa last year sort of felt this way to me, but look, I, I mean, I'm nitpicking. It, it was as bad as I can remember, and I've, I've said to anybody who'll listen, I, I expected energy early. I expected the Jaguars to lead. I expected one of those games where the commentators were talking about, hey, Look at how well they're playing. Look at their fight. This is an okay team. And then I expected Josh Allen, which he did in the first half, to take over the game. Uh, I did not expect um, what looked like listless. But, mm -hmm. like, whatever adjective you can use for poor, it was bad. It was embarrassing. And it, it's, uh, it's the kind of thing that something needs to get shaken up, and we'll find out what it is. You know, and I have to say, I felt like it was over when they went three and out on their first offensive series. By the way, they have done that with their first offensive series in each of the three games this season, and it just spelled doom. The Bills were in such great form, and they just charged down the field. You had to answer. You had to do something, and they couldn't do anything with an offense that we all expected would be able to build on what they did last year. It just it leaves you scratching your head thinking, can they fix this? And just so frustrating considering the expectations going into this year as well. Big thing number two, unstoppable. We put a lot on the offense not getting going so far this season. The defense looked terrible on Monday Night Football, allowing the Bills to score at will. Yes, Buffalo is a very talented team, but Jaguars made them look even better, John. That was frustrating. We talked about this new defensive scheme, but there was just so many issues on the front, the back, all of it. Yeah, they were down in the secondary. Jarian Jones got hurt early, and uh, Tyson Campbell's already out. Darnell Savage's already out, all those things. Um, look, they're going to play man, and they, they kept playing man on Monday night, and the Bills kept beating it with plays that were, frankly, designed to beat man. Uh, the X factor to me and the thing that is concerning, I really thought the linchpin of this uh, defense was going to be the front. I thought Eric... Eric Armstead, Trayvon Walker, Josh Hines Allen, uh, Devon Hamilton. I, I kind of pictured, Brian, a group that could win with four and could dominate without help. And uh, they haven't been that in big moments or against Buffalo in any moment. You know, you said linchpin to the defense, but I, I think you and I talked during the course of the preseason about them being, being the strength of this team. Right. You know, they would set up the offense in good field position. They would be able to, you know, in the case of turnovers, which we saw way too many of last year, they would be able to get the ball back or at least to, to hold the team to a field goal attempt. The talent is there to get it done. But, you know, there were moments. I mean, Josh Hines-Allen on, on the first touchdown run took a terrible angle on the running back, Cook. I, I, just, I was stunned that he jumped so far inside and then couldn't get back. It looked to me like it was, here we go again, panic on the defensive side when they couldn't get the stop. I don't know whether that was not being able to get them off the field on fourth down because of the error by Andre Sisco. I, I don't know. But when they got deep into the red zone and it appeared that they were going to score, the Jaguars' defense panicked. Yeah, it's hard to look at it unless you know what the assignments are. But often in that situation, you get down early, there's some urgency to it, and, and you sort of start playing hero ball on defense, that's going it. after things that, that are outside the scheme. And that's where you got to be careful sometimes of saying, well, there was no effort. Uh, usually it's misplaced effort that causes a performance last night. Uh, 
it would be interesting to talk to coaches this week. My guess is that's what it is. It's going to be a short week because we played on Monday Night Football. Our final big thing is changes. So going into this week, something has to change, whether it'll be personnel, it'll be scheme, what they're going to do exactly. Brian, when you're looking at changes like this, we heard from head coach Doug Peterson about saying everything is on the table. I, honestly, I don't know what you change. I mean, if you looked at the starting defensive line last night, it was Tyler Lacey and, and Orlando Ledbetter that started out there. I mean, Ryan Nielsen moves guys around it. It's not like personnel changes there. And I said last week, I think you had to have the conversation about replacing Cam Robinson, who had a really difficult game. But by the end of the game, your ability to do that was compromised by Anton Harrison's injury. And now Walker Little starting on the right side. So uh, the, the offensive line would be an area where I would be interested in getting young, hungry players into the lineup. Walker Little is playing for a contract. I would love to play or leverage that, his human nature, to go out and play his best. But, man, I'm grasping at straws here. You can't make a lot of changes during the course of an NFL season. Well, Doug alluded to it after the game on Monday that, you know, there is an element here you've prepared. The way you build teams in this day and age, you build your depth chart with the idea you're going to go play. You have your backups, and there's a few cases. Uh, Walker Little could be a case. Cooper Hodges could be a case. Um, I don't see him on defense pulling Trayvon Walker, Josh Hines, Allen, Devon, you know, these guys we're talking about. Uh, they're not going to change scheme. Uh, Doug said uh, on Tuesday, I think it was, not going to make changes in terms of game day roles in the coaching staff. Uh, look, it's the old thing. People have watched these shows of ours during struggling seasons. They want change. There's a limit to how much you can do on the fly. You just got to do what you're doing better, tweak a few things, but it's not going to be wholesale. I think they might be forced into some changes as well. We've had some injuries in that game and before the game as well. We'll go over that a little bit later on in the show. Stay with us. We're going to look at the tape from Monday Night Football. Navigating the current housing market and figuring out your best move when it comes to a mortgage isn't your full-time job but it's one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. That's where the experts at Jet Home Loans get into the game and coach you to your ultimate goal of getting not just the right loan, but the perfect loan for you and the home of your dreams. Jet Home Loans works with you all the way, from application to closing, making sure your game plan is perfect. Make the call to Jet Home Loans and let their team join your team to make your dreams take flight. Visit JetHL.com. Ranked as the nation's best public university by the Wall Street Journal, the University of Florida is on a mission to transform education. UF continues to help grow the economy through research breakthroughs and leadership in AI. And with its nationally recognized career services, UF students and graduates have never been better prepared to make a difference in the world. To learn more about how the University of Florida fuels bold ideas that make an impact around the globe, visit fromflorida.ufl.edu. Are you ready for a taste bud touchdown? Well, Jags fans, if you're at the bank and craving a snack that's shell-shockingly good, look no further than Lou Ray Peanut Company's Boiled Peanuts. Picture this, you in the stands, cheering on your Jaguars, and in one hand, a bag of piping hot boiled peanuts. With original or Cajun to choose from, they're so delicious, you'll wonder where they've been all your life. So grab them while they're hot and get back to the game. And as always, Lou Ray Boiled Peanuts, where every nut is a winner. Hey, Jaguars fans, as the official whiskey sponsor of the NFL, it's not kickoff without the generous spirit of Crown Royal. And that's why they've built the Crown Royal Rig. An absurdly awesome 18-wheeler delivering the generous spirit to stadiums and tailgates across the country. Follow the Royal Rig on its journey from city to city, bringing together local cuisine, NFL legends, and the opportunity to pack a purple bag for charity and win tickets to Super Bowl 59. Visit crownroyal.com for rules and more. Please drink responsibly. Check it out, the new iPhone 16 Pro with Apple intelligence and camera control for easy access. At Verizon, you can get it when you trade in any phone from one of their top brands. Any? Any. Even if it's four years old? Yeah. Even if it's four years old and I drop it on the sidewalk? Um, yep. Even if it's four years old and I drop it on the sidewalk, then a scooter runs it over, so now it's not just old and cracked but shattered? Oh... With Verizon, the answer is always yes. New and existing customers can trade in any phone from one of our top brands in any condition for the new iPhone 16 Pro with unlimited ultimate. Trade in terms apply. See Verizon.com for details. Are you ready for some football? 
Well, you are now, thanks to Ticketmaster. As the official ticket marketplace of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the NFL, Ticketmaster's got the best way to take it to the house when it comes to being there live. They're the safest and most convenient marketplace to score fully verified Jaguars tickets. And even if your plans get broken up or worse, turned over, Ticketmaster gives you more flexibility to sell your seats. So get those touchdown celebrations ready and score your tickets today at Ticketmaster.com slash Jaguars. Tag Van brought to you by Fields First, Jacksonville's premier luxury auto group. Go to FieldsAuto.com. It's not for lack of effort or trying and all of that. I just think that sometimes you just have to get out of your own way, right? And um, we just keep digging ourselves in a in a hole early and and can't seem to dig our way out of it. You know, especially you know as one sided as this game was today. Jaguars got behind early, that is for sure. I will politely disagree with Doug a little bit there because there may be effort, but as soon as there is any resistance, it just feels like they kind of put their hands up to it, Brian. And I think that's part of the frustration I'm feeling is if you feel like everybody's going out there giving 110% and they just aren't good enough, yep. then that's fine. But I think we all feel that there are talented parts of this roster. There's ways to do this, and they're just not doing it correctly. Say it with me because you've heard me say it. This is not a resilient team. They weren't last year when things turned bad, and I get it. There were injuries, John, and and that prevented them. But the Buccaneers game and and at the end of the season, the Titans game, with everything to play for on that final Sunday of the season, the playoffs, the division title, um, nothing, right? And then last night, with everything that was there, when things went bad, where was the resiliency? Call it mental toughness, call it whatever you want. This team is lacking in their ability, and we can talk about their lacking in ability, you know, on the field, but off the, the field. I mean, b- between the head, you know, here, here, mm-hmm. you, you, you expect to see more when things get tough. I expect to see more when things get tough. Yeah, I, again, I, I don't doubt the want to as much as the ability to want to the right way. And uh, I know they want to win, but in the last nine games, there's a, there's a collective belief that a team has to have to sort of stop one of these things at coming together. And I think they want to. And then when it doesn't happen in the big moments, when there's not that guy to jump up and make the big play, they felt to me a little bit like, like the end of last year when we all talked about, and I think Josh Hines Allen said it after the season, sort of waiting for somebody else to make that big play. They keep thinking somebody will be the guy to step up. Um, you know, and after nine games, it's fair to wonder, do they have that guy? Yeah. And I, I, I hope they do. Right now, they have to show they do. Was there last night? Uh, let's look at some of these Josh Allen touchdown throws because we talk a little bit about a player making plays. He wants to make those plays, and obviously he's one of the best in the league. That's a perfect example. But just the way he's setting up the offense and what the Buffalo Bills have been able to do, because I, I look at Josh Allen as a little bit as an example. Like He used to have those problems where he'd throw interceptions, but he was throwing the ball. He was making those decisions and kind of taking that role on good and bad and worked through it to the point where he's at now. And you want that for our team. You want that for Trevor. You want that for Josh Hines Allen. You want that for all of them. And it's just to see it, the stark comparison made it even more drastic to me. With good teams, Brian, you feel like, I'm never quite sure how to enunciate this perfect way, but they know how they want to play. And the Bills feel like they know exactly what they want to do and they have the capability to do it. And the Jaguars right now, I don't think you can watch their offense and think that they know collectively exactly what they want to do or who they want to be. Some of that is because they haven't converted third down. So that, you know, we're back to talking identity a little bit. Um, The Bills got on a roll and knew exactly how they wanted to attack. Uh, The Jaguars haven't gotten there. I'm trying to analyze John. this thing. As I wrote last night, there's just so little to analyze when you so get blown little. out like this. But Josh that, Allen. to me, feels like something lacking. Josh Allen here looks like he is playing in the backyard, just scrambling around and making a play. He feels comfortable. He, he, he's clear. Listen, he's the best player on the field last night. I mean, anything he wanted to do, he did seemingly with ease. But just watch the way that he moves, and you Man. realize he knows exactly what he's doing, as opposed to you had Trevor out there, and it looked like he was so mechanical and forced and trying to do everything by the numbers, I, 
Right. He's not at the same level as no. Josh Allen. And again, it's not all on Trevor, but you expect big plays, and, and their quarterback made them, and our quarterback did not. Yeah. Let's look a little bit of what Trevor was dealing with because, yes, Trevor does need to make plays. The offensive line also needs to hold up a little bit. And then I think a little bit of it is a combination of both because because they aren't playing well, then Trevor gets in his own head a little bit about thinking he's going to get pressure no matter what. So seeing that play and just kind of him getting sacked a lot, there was a lot of combinations there. And you know, people wanted to talk about the play calling a lot. I don't know what you could do because there wasn't much time to do much of anything with some of these plays here. Well, there's no time there. Yes. Um, and uh, we'll see what the injury situation is. I know Anton has a knee injury he's dealing with. So we saw Walker a little in there a little bit. He didn't look great either. We hadn't seen Walker. And we thought, oh, maybe that would help. Yeah, some of it is like what we're showing here is late in the game when the Bills just teed off. Just knew what was coming. And I, I think it was Trevor talked um, about how when that happens against the Bills, they have a lot of different looks. They can bring all those looks at every play. If, if you get down 25 to a team like the Bills, you're going to have big, big problems in pass pro. There's still in the first half, there's opportunities there where there's time. And even beyond the offensive line, it's not clicking when there are opportunities. They, they need to figure out a way to get a lead, play with the lead, convert some third downs, all those cliche stuff. Uh, I guess I'll believe when I see it. I, um, Doug said... You know, you've got a lot of time invested, and you have an offensive philosophy. You have a way that you want to play. Um, just an observation. I, I, this team needs to be able to run the ball to set up play action. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're going to line up. And, and they had been doing that okay. I, I think the chance to do that got away from them a little it bit. It did last night. Uh, they definitely want to do that, but you've you got to be able to do, to do that. Yeah. You have to be able to do that. And playing from behind, obviously, an issue no, it doesn't, as well. No, it doesn't lead to that, but I, I just... I'd like to see Tank Bigsby slamming the ball in on first down, you know, and creating some yardage in the middle of that to, to bring the safeties to the line of scrimmage and, and allow Trevor the time to go throw it. Um, we saw Trevor's interception uh, overthrowing Brian Thomas Jr. We're talking so much about getting Brian Thomas Jr. involved. I know that was kind of later on when they were trying to figure something out, but just seeing that regression as well was tough because we hadn't seen that in a little. I mean, he wasn't playing great, but he wasn't turning the ball over like that. And to see that as well was just kind of icing on the cake at that point, unfortunately. Yeah, it, I guess to me at that point, I felt like whatever, because I mean, yeah. and I'm, uh, I'm not trying to be facetious there. I understand. I felt like 23, the Bills were gonna score and they got the ball back no matter what, and they were playing so uphill. He hadn't done that this year, uh, can't start doing that. He sailed it, and his MO throughout the course of his career, he does that a few times a year, and uh, I wish he didn't, but I even had a tough time putting that in key plays because I didn't feel like I cared that much about that. You know what's interesting point. about this play? And I can open my notebook and show you this. I, I, I wrote down, on, as they were getting ready to go for it on fourth down, right at their own, what, 39, 40 mm -hmm. yard line, I wrote, turn out the lights, comma, the party's over. The old the Andy Don Meredith song that he used to sing from the broadcast booth because I thought, you don't get this one. It's over. I mean, there's no chance whatsoever. And Trevor took the snap and did what Doug has said he doesn't do very well. He put his shoulder down, and you could just see he was not going to be denied on Found that. Found a little crease. Got a quick so, yeah. sink, yeah. And, 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 and you, could, you had a great camera angle. You could see the look on his face. So I scratched it out. I thought, okay, the quarterback's got something. Literally, it's right there. I scratched it out. And then the very next play was the interception, and I, I wrote it again. Turn out the lights. The party's over. We read it in pen that time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's enough for a video. We're going to come back, talk a little bit about some of the possible changes we might see coming up this week in This or That. We need to define a great deal in today's new home market because the so-called great deals that you find on every corner just aren't the same as the incredible opportunities you'll find with a new DreamFinders home. How about 2.99% in year one in one of DreamFinder's 15 communities across North Florida? Now that's a great deal. 2.99% interest rate in year one and a beautiful new DreamFinder's home. Visit dfhsalesevent.com for our largest savings of the year on move-in ready homes. That's dfhsalesevent.com. When disaster strikes, trust the experts at SurfPro. 
As a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, they bring the same dedication and precision to restoring your property as the Jaguars do on the field. Whether it's water, fire, or storm damage, their highly trained professionals are on call 24-7 to make it like it never even happened. Surf Pro, your local leader in restoration and cleanup. Check it out, the new iPhone 16 Pro with Apple intelligence and camera control for easy access. At Verizon, you can get it when you trade in any phone from one of their top brands. Any? Any. Even if it's four years old? Yeah. Even if it's four years old and I drop it on the sidewalk? Um, yep. Even if it's four years old and I drop it on the sidewalk, then a scooter runs it over, so now it's not just old and cracked but shattered? Oh. With Verizon, the answer is always yes. New and existing customers can trade in any phone from one of our top brands in any condition for the new iPhone 16 Pro with unlimited ultimate. Trade-in terms apply. See Verizon.com for details. Are you ready for a taste bud touchdown? Well, Jags fans, if you're at the bank and craving a snack that's shell-shockingly good, look no further than Lou Ray Peanut Company's Boiled Peanuts. Picture this, you in the stands, cheering on your Jaguars, and in one hand, a bag of piping hot boiled peanuts. With original or Cajun to choose from, they're so delicious, you'll wonder where they've been all your life. So grab them while they're hot and get back to the game. And as always, Lou Ray Boiled Peanuts, where every nut is a winner. The power of a great team starts with the right equipment, specialized skills, and the training to win. That's why ASAP Dental Care and the Jaguars have the home team advantage. At ASAP Dental Care, we follow our playbook to perfection to exceed your expectations. Count on us to be there for you seven days a week to deliver full-service dental care. Score a winning smile with ASAP Dental Care today. Craving the ultimate game day experience? Look no further. Cheer on your Jaguars as they travel to Houston to take on the Texans this Sunday at the official away game watch party at Mr. Chubby's Fleming Island. Indulge in the biggest and best wings in town with appearances by Jackson DeVille and The Roar. You'll even get the chance to win autographed items and game tickets, all while soaking up a lively atmosphere with fellow Jags fans. Mr. Chubby's Wings, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mr. Chubby's Wings. Before the game, after the game, and during the game. For 11 years, DreamFinders Homes have been proud to call themselves the official home builder of the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all of the available inventory and go Jags. This or that. This or that. All right, we're going to go over a little this or that. We're not the experts in terms of how to fix this, but we're going to try to talk this out and see if we can figure out what they might be doing here. Obviously, changes are all on the table. Head coach Doug Peterson said that as much after the game and today. If we look at the offensive side of the ball, personnel probably not going to be seeing a huge change there, I imagine, just due to injuries in the scheme that they already have in place. But is it personnel? Is it scheming? What can be changed? What is possible? Is it just execution still? Well, I mean, execution is absolutely the overriding. I mean, it's 90% of it at least. Um, the injury is going to make it interesting. I'm, I, I'll, I'll say the same thing I did last week. I, Cam Robinson is not playing well. And if he can't hold up, your quarterback can't play well. I would make the change. I'd put Walker Little in, a guy who's hungry and playing for a contract who you thought would be your starting left tackle at some point when you drafted him in the second round overall. I would also make the move with Cooper Hodges. I, I, the coaches can go, Brian, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't see the same thing that we see on the practice field. You don't know what we know. But he's a young, hungry, strong player. And I just got done saying that I think that they've got to be better using play action. And that means the running game. And I, I just don't have a lot of confidence that the right guard moves anybody anymore. And I would be pushing to get Cooper Hodges in. But I can't think of anything outside that. Yeah, I think those changes... They sort of have a feeling now of inevitability at some point. I don't know when that point will be. I don't know if it's not on Sunday. I don't know when it would be. Yeah. Uh, I think Brian touched on something earlier, and I usually don't give you that much credit. But, I, I, yeah, uh, I've noticed that. Maybe we should switch. Maybe I should sit there. Maybe that would be. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll switch spots on the couch. That'll work. I think maybe running Bigsby a little bit uh, early, not that Travis you know, hasn't done anything to not get his carries. But that, that could be a thing. They tried getting it to Gabe, I mean, not Gabe, but Brian Thomas Jr., a little more pointedly at times on, on, on Monday. So maybe those are the... Uh, beyond that, it's just difficult because you have put so much preparation and everybody sort of knows what your best 
shot is. Even the players sort of know that on most cases. So when you start changing that, you feel like you're weakening yourself, even though public perception is, oh, we got to make a change. Yeah. So um, I think it, any changes might be a little more subtle in terms of game plan uh, than they are like bold personnel moves that can be tweeted. Listen, and I, I got to be honest, after last night, I just want some power. I want something that feels powerful. And, and Tank Bigsby is a power back. And I think that you will, and it seems like he's always moving forward, mm -hmm. right? It seems like he's always still grinding his way for three or four yards. I just think if you can do that, you can force a defense to adjust and then you can take your shots. Again, oversimplification sitting here without tape and the analytics report and all of that. But having done this for 30 years, I think I know enough to think that would help. By the eye test, that would definitely yeah, help. Yeah, that's the way to put it. Um, when we look at the defensive side of the ball, we talked a little bit about the man coverage that did not work against Buffalo. Obviously, that's what they've been hanging their hat on under this new defensive scheme under Ryan Nielsen. Is this something you tweak? Is this something you change? Especially with the personnel that you may not now have available because of injuries. Do you have to kind of change that a little bit? I think it's hard because it's sort of what you've built, your philosophy, you know, aggressive attack. This has been what has been preached. Um, so you get away from that after one game, which really for the defense, it's it's the first bad game. It's one game. You get away from that, and then you've got players sitting in their lockers going, "Why are we getting away from? Like, I thought we were doing this." So you got to be careful of completely re-identifying what you've said your philosophy is, um, but you also have to adapt. So. Uh, Right now, I don't know that there's major personnel changes to be made right. because in the secondary, they're low. They've already been rotating along the front, and I'm not sure they're going to get away from that. So, I, subtly, blitz a little more. Uh, I hate being the get after the quarterback, be aggressive blitz guy. I don't think you'll see huge philosophical changes on defense. Um, and let me turn around and, and repay the compliment because oh, you have you. been on this one. You guys are being so sweet today. Uh, this well, is a silver lining. It feels like we're, we're not saying anything nice because we really haven't. I mean, there's nothing nice to say. However, John has, has said steadfastly about this team is that it's not the secondary, it's the front, right? I mean, in today's NFL, the way that the rules are written, uh, rare are the players, the cornerbacks, who are so strong and skilled that they can shut down a wide receiver. This is about the front. Um, I, I don't see them changing. I, I see them trying to get more pressure. I don't know whether that's bringing a, a blitzing linebacker. I don't, I don't know how they do it. But it, it has to start up front before you can start thinking about what you're doing on the back end. Yeah, to reiterate, when they signed Armstead and they brought and, and Hamilton was healthy, and you had Trayvon and Josh top 10 picks, philosophically you were saying, we will be good because we're elite here. And that bunch as a group, uh, I think back, hasn't played all that elite. No. And if the defense is going to be big time, that's where it has to start. All right, how about a little optimism for this one as we look forward? Can a win change something right now? I know there's not a lot of confidence in this, but if you look at this, what the division looks like, it's not as if anybody's doing a great job. Houston is still, obviously, because it's just three weeks in, we're still in range. If you go to Houston and you get a win, I would say that would change what I think of this team. Do I know they can do that at this point? I don't. It absolutely can change. Oh, it would change my mind. Because of this, too. Um, the Texans still have the same difficult, brutal schedule as the Jaguars. Uh, they've already played the Colts. They've already played the Bears. Those are two teams, look, right now the way the Jaguars are saying, I'm not, I'm not saying they're favored against any team, but those aren't the Bills, for example, right? So you feel like there will be games the Texans can lose. They're not going undefeated. If you get back within one game in the tie break. Which you would. Then with a straight face, Doug can tell the team we're right back in it. Yep. And, and he's not saying anything that's not true. So. Absolutely can change it. Um, and you get the Colts the next weekend, and you have a chance right. at home to go 2-0 and in the division, right? Which is what it takes for this team to make the playoffs, because you won't have any tiebreakers with a couple of losses in the AFC early on. But we may we may as well be in your home state, Brian, the show-me state. Yeah. Because you got you to gotta show me. Because before I say this team's going to do anything at this point, you gotta do it. I'm the one who said they're going to play with energy on Monday. I, I, you I, weren't I, the only one. Right. Well, 
It's about me, though, Brian. So, <laughs> uh, Listen, so amazingly, I can't say that again until I see. Amazingly, a, 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 as negative as everything is right now, and it is, you, you can forget about this with a win. You, you, because now you're talking about coming home, a game behind them, and the Colts the next week, and you have a chance there to be right in the thick of things. Yes, one win at this moment of the season can change everything. All is not lost. Let's look ahead. Yes. Let's look yes. ahead. It's still available. It's still, still possibilities. Um, stay with us here. We'll tell you what's going on the rest of this short week before we head to Houston. Navigating the current housing market and figuring out your best move when it comes to a mortgage isn't your full-time job, but it's one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. That's where the experts at Jet Home Loans get into the game and coach you to your ultimate goal of getting not just the right loan, but the perfect loan for you and the home of your dreams. Jet Home Loans works with you all the way, from application to closing, making sure your game plan is perfect. Make the call to Jet Home Loans and let their team join your team to make your dreams take flight. Visit JetHL.com. When disaster strikes, trust the experts at SurfPro. As a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, they bring the same dedication and precision to restoring your property as the Jaguars do on the field. Whether it's water, fire, or storm damage, their highly trained professionals are on call 24-7 to make it like it never even happened. SurfPro. Your local leader in restoration and cleanup. Ranked as the nation's best public university by the Wall Street Journal, the University of Florida is on a mission to transform education. UF continues to help grow the economy through research breakthroughs and leadership in AI. And with its nationally recognized career services, UF students and graduates have never been better prepared to make a difference in the world. To learn more about how the University of Florida fuels bold ideas that make an impact around the globe, visit fromflorida.ufl.edu. Come on. Listen up. Just like football, timing is everything. Only water your lawn when necessary. And always check the weather before turning on those sprinklers. Save water, save money, and score big. It's a win-win. Whether you're on the field or at home, we're all on the same team. Florida's water. It's worth saving. This message brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Visit sjrwmd.com for more information. Hello, I'm Dan Fields, and we have some great news. Fields has the vehicle you want, in stock, priced right, and ready for delivery. Fields Auto Group is Jacksonville's luxury automotive destination for Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Inventory is back and available for immediate delivery. And every Fields customer can take advantage of our Fields Amenities Program with complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. You deserve the best. Stop by today or go to fieldsauto.com. Craving the ultimate game day experience? Look no further. Cheer on your Jaguars as they travel to Houston to take on the Texans this Sunday at the official away game watch party at Mr. Chubby's Fleming Island. Indulge in the biggest and best wings in town with appearances by Jackson DeVille and The Roar. You'll even get the chance to win autographed items and game tickets, all while soaking up the lively atmosphere with fellow Jags fans. Mr. Chubby's Wings, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mr. Chubby's Wings, before the game, after the game, and during the game. Jags fans, if you want customized Jaguars furniture for your home, check out ZipChair.com to browse all the customizable options. ZipChair is furniture for fans. Also, Jags fans, Tuesday, October 1st from 5 to 6, head to the Publix located at the exchange at e- at, excuse me, the exchange at E-Town to meet Jaguars players for special appearances. They gear up for the home game against the Colts. That's the Publix located at 11205 E-Town Parkway on Tuesday, October 1st from 5 to 6. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. At the end of the day, when we step on that field, we got to make the plays. And I think that's what we're lacking right now is we're not just not making the plays. Uh, we're in positions to do it and not doing it. So, Players are going to get a chance to make the plays in a very important game as we take on the Houston Texans, leaders of the division, on Sunday. And I know it's a short week, so they're going to have to flush it a little bit quickly. But I will say, because of the delays of the team playing, they got to sit with it for several hours in a stadium where they got blown out and to sit there. And I, while I don't advocate for wallowing in it, sometimes you need to think about 
what you've done. And I feel like the team got to do that. Now they're going to come back in this week and work on it. And in a short week, try to turn this thing around. They need a hard corner, right? I mean, something they can hold on to and thrust themselves into a different hallway, so to speak. Something that takes them, you know, at a turning point in their season. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was it. They need it desperately this week. And the Texans are good, but they did not play well Sunday. Uh, there are some flaws that you should be able to take advantage of, but uh, the Jaguars have a lot of flaws they have to fix. Can be done. We'll look ahead on Thursday to see a little bit about what exactly Texans-Jags game is going to look like. So we'll see you on Thursday morning. Thank <laughs> you.